Hello, Kid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. My guest had a sad childhood. He was molested. And he had, as a child, an encounter. As a young man, he literally, and I mean this, literally was hugged by Jesus. And all of that hurt, all of that rejection, all of that wounding instantly left. Now, when he speaks, others get hugged by Jesus. But the hug did more than get rid of the bad. It deposited some good. He operates in creative miracles today. He had the most verified creative miracle I have ever, ever investigated. Do you want to find out about it? Me too. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Is God ready to bring a tsunami wave of healing onto planet Earth today? Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. You know, you know uh, Bruce, uh, I know your background. You were molested as a child. Uh, you, you, um, you were headed towards disaster. And uh, you weren't a churchgoer. You, 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 you went to a Sunday school for the first and only time of your life with your grandparents, and you were told about the love that Jesus has for you. And then shortly thereafter, you, you were uh, in bed and weeping. Why were you weeping? Oh, it was a particularly bad night. I was feeling shame, guilt, uh, fear, uh, just all those emotions balled up, uh, guilt, all the stuff that's tied with being molested. And when you're about ready to hear what I'm going to ask him next, many people get supernaturally healed even as they hear what actually happened to Bruce. What happened? Well, when I was in that Sunday school, the Sunday school teacher told the story about Jesus hugging the children. And so now you fast forward several months to this night, and as I'm laying there feeling this hurt, this guilt, this pain, the fear that came along with it, that story came back into my mind of what he had said. And I knew there was nobody that was gonna give me any affection, attention, or love. So I just simply said, doubting Thomas' prayer, and said, Jesus, if you're real, I want you to come here and hug me like you did those kids in that story. And immediately, I was picked up off the bed, pulled into a chest, and I got a full, like a real hug, but it was so much more, Sid, than just a physical hug. It was like being, words, I have a hard time coming up with the words to describe it, but it was like being dipped in liquid love from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, and all the, the guilt and the shame, the fear, all of those bad feelings just began to just wash off and wash off, and I woke up the next morning, I fell asleep like that, and I woke up the next morning, and here's five, five-year-old theology for you, I said, there is something to this Jesus thing. Now, November 2006, the devil tried to kill you. In yeah. fact, he succeeded. Yeah. Bruce died. What happened to you briefly? A particular day, I was working underneath a large Peterbilt logging truck, as big as any semi truck you ever find. Hmm. The other mechanic I was working with who worked for this logging company had removed one of the front wheels. And he had jacked it up, but unfortunately did not use any safety equipment, no jack stands or blocking. I knew it, and that was my own fault. I still went underneath anyway. I was underneath the truck. I was laying underneath the front axle. That's the lowest part of the truck on, on these big trucks. 10 to 12,000 pounds of weight just on that front axle. And that jack that's over here as I'm laying underneath it, 
I said to him, go get, get inside the truck and shut the engine off. When he did, the truck shifted just enough. The jack slipped out and that axle, this 10 to 12,000 pounds of weight came down like a blunt guillotine and crushed my body in half. On impact, blood came out as it fell through me. And I just called out and said, Lord Jesus, help me. I remember saying it twice in case he didn't hear me the first time. <laughs> and I looked down and there was about one inch of space between the bottom of the axle and the cement. So I knew my body was one inch thick here and there was about two inches of space between one the bottom. One inch? Of yeah, in fact, I was what thinner than my your, spine. What happened to your organs? Your, Spleen, your... pancreas, intestines, all crushed. Uh, it's thinner than my spine because L4, L5 vertebrae are broken. Five places, major arteries were severed. I had a flat spot. I looked like something out of a cartoon. In fact, when I looked at myself, that's what I thought. Something out of a cartoon, I'm flat. And as I'm bleeding out and, and feeling going into shock, obviously feeling weak, I'm begging him to get me out in front of the truck. He ended up, the, the guy I was working with, ended up jacking the truck up off me. And when he jacked the truck up off me, it was at that point that I actually bled out because the truck was holding everything together. It's a volunteer fire department area, so when he dialed 911, guys' pagers are going off, and uh, these two, these, the first guy gets there, and the second guy gets there, and they're asking me questions and talking just a little bit. I was mumbling, and it was at that point my heart stopped. Now, I remember, literally, I heard my heart stop, and it was because I bled out. When it happened, when my heart quit beating, my spirit left my body, I went up to the roof of the garage, and then I watched from above the whole entire thing uh, playing out. And let me say this, when I was in the roof, I felt amazing. There was absolutely no fear, no pain. I felt the... the the most incredible peace I've ever experienced in my entire life. I just watched from above, and on each side of my body were two humongous angels about eight feet tall. I, I gauged them off of the guy I was working with, who was about six feet tall. Their head stuck up a couple feet taller than his head. Big, broad shoulders, white shining robes like the Bible talks about, emanating light, and they had their hands in the middle where I was crushed flat. They were just ministering to my body. I'm just watching them from above. One of the last two people that came to the scene of the accident was a two-month-old baby Christian named Shannon. She came in between the angels. She's feeling for a pulse. She asks, I, I'm watching it all from above. She says, what's his name? They, they say Bruce Van by, by the way, the two-month means she'd been a believer for two months. She wasn't two months. <laughs> right, I'm so, right. So she's, she's feeling and she said, what is his name? And they said, Bruce Van She begins to pat me in the face and say, Bruce Van open your eyes. Come on, open your eyes. And she gets louder and louder. I watched as everybody in the place turned and looked at her and gave her the crazy lady look. Like, what are you doing, right? There's no CPR, there's no defibrillator. She just slapped me in the face saying, open your eyes. And as she did, my spirit came back out of the ceiling into my body. And the first thing that happened when I came back in, my heart started, but this incredible pain came. Like I felt like a truck had fallen on me, right? And I'm crushed in half and I was like, no, I don't, I don't want this. As soon as I made that decision, my heart stopped again. My spirit left my body, a tunnel opened up going out of the roof of that garage up about a 45 degree angle and I could tell there was a bright light on the end of it and I just got in the tunnel and I started going towards the light and I knew that it was heaven on the end of the tunnel. It felt amazing. As I'm going, I could hear her calling my name, come back, come back, stopped in the tunnel, got sucked backwards, <laughs> back to the roof of the garage. Wait, you know, we don't know. <laughs> this is a, a, a few month old believer. We yeah. don't know the power that we, God has Amen. entrusted to us. Amen, I go back into my body and when I went back in, again, the pain comes. And I'm feeling all this peace and now I feel all this pain, but God spoke to me. And he simply said this, if you wanna live, you're gonna to have to fight and it's gonna be a hard fight. And you know what, he didn't sound nervous. He didn't sound scared, he didn't sound upset, very calmly. It was a choice decision, he gives us free will. And when he gave me the choice, if you wanna live, you're gonna to have to fight, it's gonna be a hard fight. The pain was too much, I said no. I left the third and final time, my heart stopped again. Went up to the roof, the tunnel opened up, I got in the tunnel, and as I'm going, I could hear a call. Now remember, like the zeal of a baby Christian, she keeps, she keeps praying and she prays me back to life the third time. When I came back in, that I was not happy with this woman at all. <laughs> when, when I came back in the third time, she is right here uh, looking at me and she says, mister, you're on the verge of life and death. What do you have to fight for? Do you have a wife? Do you have children? Now, I knew instinctively inside of me, God was speaking through her, and he was reminding me about my wife and my four, my four young, small children. And I couldn't fight for myself, but I could fight for them. And so I ended up uh, getting med flighted. Doctors make the claim. I'll tell you what, hold that thought. I told you this was one of the most verifiable, creative miracles I have ever, ever, ever investigated. History Channel even did a special on him. We'll be back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. 
Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, Bruce, you shocked the doc. Doctor didn't expect, expect you to live right. uh, a night, right. uh, but you lived. And then he says, well, you could live to maybe a year or a year and a half, but it's not going to be a good quality of life. Yeah. Uh, but you had a praying wife yeah. and friends who prayed for you. And um, a, a man came in and laid hands on you. What happened when he did that? Adults have 18 to 20 some feet length of small intestine. They had removed all of my small intestine because it was so crushed except for about, about approximately two feet. And so it wasn't enough to live on. They're feeding me intravenously and that's why they said I was gonna not be able to live. So I'm, I've lost 65 pounds. I'm dying in the hospital. This man comes to pray. His name is Bruce Carlson. God had gave him, uh, woke him up two mornings in a row. I was on a prayer chain at their church and he woke him up two mornings and said, go pray. He bought the ticket, he showed up, he prayed. As you said, he laid on hands. First he said, Lord, I add my prayers to all the prayers that have already gone up for Bruce. But then he laid on hands and he began to speak to the mountain like Jesus teaches in Mark 11. He said, small intestine, I command you to supernaturally grow back in length right now in the name of Jesus. And when he did, I literally felt like I had touched an electric fence on my forehead. I felt a zap, it was like power, went into my forehead through my head and into my stomach and I could feel something cylindrical moving around inside of there. In fact, I turned to a man on the other side of the bed and I said to him, it just felt like a snake came uncoiled inside of my stomach. What doctors found after doing subsequent tests, because they had done several CAT scans and x-rays and upper GIs, when they uh, found it, tested it later, I got nine to 11 feet of small intestine, creative miracle instantaneously that day out of nowhere. Now, Unbeknownst to Bruce, History Channel contacted him to be a guest to tell about his miracle. He did not know that they felt he was a phony. And they were going, the purpose was to expose you. They did all their research, and what did they have to say? When it was all said and done out of 24, it was the one that they said, this is a miracle. And this came from atheists. Atheists? Atheists. They, they, could not, they could not refute all of the medical documentation. That's what they couldn't refute. They, they said I didn't have an out-of-body experience. They said I couldn't have seen angels because they didn't believe in that. But when it came to the medical stuff, five arteries severed, nobody else in the whole world they can find that's ever lived with having five places, major arteries severed, and the intestines growing, they had to say, they had to admit that that was medically a miracle. We're going to see more and more of this. You were invited to a church that didn't see many miracles, and you had an encounter with Jesus at that church. What happened? The Lord had me uh, pray for the place. It was a church that never had anybody come forward, and so it was outside of their comfort zone. We invited people forward that had bad backs. The Lord said, pray for the first person, that first lady. God healed her back instantly. So she starts, you know, getting excited. And the Lord said, now have her pray for the next person. So she, she did. And then the Lord said, the Holy Spirit said, get off to the side, just get away from them. So I went off to the side as they're praying. And each person, every person gets healed. Who prays for the next person who gets healed. And it's 100% right down the line. Well, the Holy Spirit has me off to the side. I realized I see this ball of light, Jesus, and this big ball of light. And I, before I knew what I was, could even do, I was on the carpet with my forehead pressed into the carpet because it was such, so overwhelming, instantaneous you know, awesome power of God. And I heard him say, no, come sit next to me. So very carefully, I got up and sat next to him. Now he's sitting on my left and all the people that are getting prayed for are out, straight out in front of us. And he points his right arm to them and he said this, he said, do you see that? They don't even know you're gone. And it, it hurt for a split. I'm like, what does that mean, you know? It was a pride checker, right? But he never dropped his arm. He kept pointing and he said, that's what I want you to do. I want you to go into places and start fires. Tell the testimonies, get them, get them excited about me and go to the next place and do the same thing. And the Holy Spirit will follow up after that for those who want it. And then he followed, this is how he ended. He said, they don't need a superstar evangelist. They need to know that I love them and I want to answer their prayers. 
<laughs> but here's the thing that was so exciting to me about Bruce. He's seen so many creative miracles now. But he is equipping others to do exactly what he does. That's what his commission is. Many are commissioned to be evangelists with signs and wonders. He wants to commission you to move in creative miracles. Tell me briefly about that little baby uh, uh, where the mom... Sure. So uh, the book, A Miraculous Life, it has the weapons in it, it has the giants, and it's a, it's a play-by-play book to teach people how to pray for themselves and authority and use those weapons. So there's a family in New York at a church that I frequent once a year. They went through, they used it as a Bible study. They went through, there was a group, a small group that did the book. And uh, she couldn't have a baby. They had tried, they had nine miscarriages. And so I taught them how to pray for, uh, to, to conceive. They did, they prayed over themselves. They were able to conceive. The baby comes, but it's born with a sunken in chest. A really, I showed you the picture. I don't know if we're going to pull yeah, it up. We, we, the, we there's, the, it up. there's the picture. It's sunken in. And so the Lord tells her, pray over the baby and take a picture. So this is that night. She prays over the baby the way that we taught her in the book, right? And the way that God teaches in the book. And so she prays. And then the next morning, the husband wakes up to change the baby. And they take the onesie off. And we have an after picture that came from the next day. And the baby is 100% healed. Did you get that? He isn't praying for people. Jesus said, you just start the fire. Watch what I'm going to do through the people. Would you like him to start a fire in you when he comes back? Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Call now and get Bruce Van Atta's Living in the Miraculous Package, which includes his powerful book, A Miraculous Life, and his anointed two-part audio CD teaching, Positioning Yourself for Supernatural Victory. Plus this bonus, Bruce's mini book, God Will Talk Through You. This is an exclusive package for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9536. In his book, Bruce Van Atta shares the miracles that he has personally experienced experienced, you will understand and discern the five giants we all face in life. Receive five spiritual weapons that will help you live a supernatural life of victory. Begin to experience the same miracles that you read about in the Bible, including blind eyes and deaf ears being opened, tumors vanishing, demons being cast out, and many being set free from headache, pain, depression, and fear. Through Bruce's anointed two-part audio CD teaching, positioning yourself for supernatural victory, you will find out significant keys and life-changing revelation on how you can position yourself for supernatural victory. Learn how to overcome demonic hindrances and struggles. Get ready to receive a fresh impartation of the supernatural faith and be empowered to receive your supernatural breakthrough. Plus, you will also receive this special bonus, Bruce's mini book, God Will Talk Through You. This is something you can carry every day and everywhere you go. It's like getting Bruce to be your personal trainer in your home to do exactly what he does. And I I have to tell you, Bruce, yours is uh, the, the miracle that happened to you, the embrace by Jesus where he gave you this gifting. It's all transferable. And if not now, when? Don't miss out on getting Bruce Van Atta's Living in the Miraculous Package, which includes his powerful book, A Miraculous Life, and his anointed two-part audio CD teaching, Positioning Yourself for Supernatural Victory. Plus this bonus, Bruce's mini book, God Will Talk Through You. This is an exclusive package for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9536. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9536 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. (laughs) Oh, I knew you were going to come back. Uh, Bruce, you have identified something that a lot of people don't want to talk about, that is the missing ingredients for a sustaining life of miracles and 
victory and every promise in God's Word being activated. What is it? Well, as I've been in this, doing this ministry and praying for so many sick and uh, ministering to people and the emails and the phone calls and, and the, all the different things, what God has shown me clearly is that there are lots and lots of people who want Jesus to be their Savior. Lots of people, they want him to save their marriage. They want Jesus to save their finances, save some kind of, save him from some cancer or some kind of health issue. But they don't want him to truly be their Lord. And when we do a study on this, and the Lord had me go through and study this out in the Bible, when you do a study on just the word count, Old Testament, New Testament combined, approximately 8,000 times the word Lord is used. But it's only about 50 times that the word Savior is used. So it's clear from God's point of view what he considers to be more important. Lord is who he is. Savior is what he does. And I find people, people will contact our ministry and say, how much will it cost? How much will you charge me to pray for my wife who's dying of cancer? How much will it cost for, you, for us to pay you to, to do some of this miracle? And we'll say, you know, we have witches. We'll have people from the occult, and they'll say, they'll come right out and say, look, I'm a witch, but th I've got this physical problem. I think what you're doing is legitimate. You're tapped into something. How much will you charge me? See, they want Jesus to be their Savior, but they don't want Jesus to be the Lord. And unfortunately, said, I find a lot of Christians who unknowingly have been caught in this trap too. And what it looks like is this. Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, and follow me. Now, he didn't say... I, I have never heard that preached in a church. Well, it's not popular. And when I preach it, I don't get invited back a lot of times. <laughs> so he said, pick well, up your... Well, we'll invite you back. He, he said, pick up your cross daily. He didn't say, pick up your cross Sunday morning. He didn't say, pick up your cross uh, when you do your devotion. He said, pick up your cross daily and follow me. And when we do this, that's the whole key. When we truly make him our Lord, that means giving him the opportunity. Lord means master. Lord means ruler, it's, and Savior, we know what Savior is, the one who saves us from all these bad things, but we don't a lot of times even know what, we call him Lord, but we don't even know what that word means. It means ruler, master. So we have to give him final say, the full authority over the big decisions, the little decisions, who should I marry, what job should I take? And there's a lot of people, you know, we think we've got our own ideas that we are gonna be good, and so we're like, you know, God, I'm gonna let you into this area of my life, but not so much here, and I might do this, but you know what, I've, I've relegated this area. I want you to pray for us to be so hugged by Jesus that nothing, nothing else matters. Amen. Lord, I thank you that you know us intimately. You said you know the number of hairs on our head, and we know that number changes many times, even throughout one day. So it's your way of telling us that you know every single little detail about us, even the ones that we don't know. So Lord, we just invite you in, every person watching, every person here today, every person that's gonna watch this at some point in the future, Lord, we invite you into our lives. We pray that you would hug us, that we would have your, not just your omnipresence, but your manifest presence, Lord, your liquid love pouring down over us. Lord, forgive us for the times where we've asked you to be our savior and not wanted you or allowed you to be our Lord. Forgive us for the times. Lord, I pray that you'd open our spiritual eyes and ears, Lord, that you would make us, Lord, just humble, God, and you would show us the places where we've closed you out. We, that, Lord, you would show us where we need to repent and where we need to allow you in to be Lord, to be the master, to be the ruler, to have the final sin in life so that we can live a blessed life so we can live a supernatural life, Lord, and we can share that supernatural blessed life with everybody in our circle of influence, Lord, so that your kingdom is multiplied. We pray it all even now in Jesus' name. Amen. Bruce Van Atta had been crushed under a semi-truck where he had an out-of-body experience and witnessed the angels the Lord had sent. His healing was miraculous. Since then, Bruce Van Atta has witnessed supernatural healings and breakthroughs, not only for himself, but for others in his everyday life. Bruce wants to mentor you so you too can live a supernatural life of victory. Whoever you are, God wants to put this arsenal of weapons in your possession so that you can live a, a supernatural life and so that you can give a lost and hurting world the power of God in their lives as well. Call now and get Bruce Van Atta's Living in the Miraculous Package, which includes his powerful book, A Miraculous Life, and his anointed two-part audio CD teaching, Positioning Yourself for Supernatural Victory. Plus this bonus, Bruce's mini book, God Will Talk Through You. This is an exclusive package for our rich supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9536. In his book, Bruce Van Atta's 
shares the miracles that he has personally experienced. Through his powerful book, you will understand and discern the five giants we all face in life. Receive five spiritual weapons that will help you live a supernatural life of victory. Begin to experience the same miracles that you read about in the Bible, including blind eyes and deaf ears being opened, tumors vanishing, demons being cast out, and many being set free from headache, pain, depression, and fear. Through Bruce's anointed two-part audio CD teaching, Positioning Yourself for Supernatural Victory, you will find out significant keys and life-changing revelation on how you can position yourself for supernatural victory. Learn how to overcome demonic hindrances and struggles. Get ready to receive a fresh impartation of the supernatural faith and be empowered to receive your supernatural breakthrough. God wants to raise up an army of end-time believers who are operating the supernatural. This is meant for everyday Christians, the stay-at-home mom, the, the pastor, the teacher, the truck driver, the waitress. Plus, you will also receive this special bonus, Bruce's mini book, God Will Talk Through You. This is something you can carry every day and everywhere you go. What I love about this bonus mini book, it's something you can get through in a short period of time. It teaches people the different methods that God speaks to us today, what we can expect. And he's always speaking, just like the FM radio uh, tower. Do we have our receiver tuned in to listen? It's like getting Bruce to be your personal trainer in your home to do exactly what he does. And I, I have to tell you, Bruce, yours is uh, the, the miracle that happened to you, the embrace by Jesus where he gave you this gifting. It's all transferable. And if not now, when? Don't miss out on getting Bruce Van Atta's Living in the Miraculous Package, which includes his powerful book, A Miraculous Life, and his anointed two-part audio CD teaching, Positioning Yourself for Supernatural Victory. Plus this bonus, Bruce's mini book, God Will Talk Through You. This is an exclusive package for our rich supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9536. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9536 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. Hi, I'm Francis Frangipan. You know, uh, depression, anxiety, sickness, disease, and pain are running rampant through the world. But there is a place, a place where you can be protected from everything, everything the enemy would throw at you. Join me on It's Supernatural with Sid Roth as I share how you can enter daily and live in the shelter of the Most High. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide. 